out of here. Uh, these are Fortune Teller fish. I bought 500 of these initially for five dollars, but they're a bit more expensive now. You can get them from uh, from eBay and Amazon. Anyone 30 and above will instantly know what to do. The kids aren't really that sure. You put it on your palm, and you see what happens. Now my one curled up entirely. That means I'm passionate. Passionate about IB chemistry. Did that sound convincing? Anyway, so how does this work? Well, it's an open-ended experiment. I just give it to the kids and then they can practice and play with it. A lot of them think it's heat, but it's actually the moisture in your hand. So to get them to isolate the fact it's the moisture and not the heat, that's a little tricky. Maybe you'll need rubber gloves or maybe you'll need slightly warm hot plates or something like that in order to work it out. Anyway, that was one of the cheapest experiments I ever did. Uh, one cent per experiment. So this was about three dollars delivered from AliExpress. It's just a fiber optic lamp. It shows a total internal reflection and how the glass fiber can can change the direction of light. So these are used in uh, telecommunication cables. Uh, it uses three three AAA batteries, which are in there. And rather delightfully, it can change color. So you can talk a little bit about the three different colors of the light spectrum, RGB. Ah, the classic dippy bird. The multiple experiments you could do, including changing the temperature of the liquid it dips into, the nature of the liquid, and even rather cheekily heating his little bottom, because that works just as well as cooling his head. So these are Magdeburg hemispheres. They're about three bucks. Uh, you can just pull them apart quite easily. But if you reduce the air pressure inside, if you reduce the air pressure inside, idiot. Now, much harder to pull them apart. <coughs> so there's a nice little experiment you can do. You could uh, measure how much air you've evacuated from the hemisphere versus, I don't know, how much effort it takes to pull them apart, perhaps by suspending them vertically and hanging weights off at the end. This is a cheap counterfeit uh, money pen. Real money leaves no mark, but fake money turns it black. Yeah, that's definitely the fake money. So uh, real money has no starch in it, but fake money, the paper, does have starch in it. So this is essentially a detector for starch. You can also use it for food. This bread has a little starch in it. You can see it's turned black. Rice cakes, yep, yeah, that's got starch. Cheese, no. Apple, no starch. Grape, no starch. And even though las lasagna has starch, if it's uncooked, it doesn't give a positive test. But if it's cooked, it does give a positive test. So I think here the starch has probably been released from its tight chemical bonds, allowing it to react with the pen. And also the pen gets a bit mucky in between, so you might have to clean it off a bit. Even though it looks dirty, it still will leave a, a clean mark. Some of that dirt's baked in. Nice. So this was just a couple of dollars delivered. Uh, I figure you could use this to teach about uh, 
differential density, uh, the uh, higher density uh, chemical is going to go down. It's also a, a timer as well. Uh, the fact that I think the blue and the red, the oil there, it must have uh, non-polar colorants in the non-polar oils. Uh, and also, I bet if you, if you chilled this down, it will go slower. I bet this is temperature dependent because the colder it is, the uh, more viscous the materials will be. Okay, I tweaked it a bit to get it working. Oh. That's kinetic energy from potential energy. Well, I wonder if, if I change the mass at the end, if it will go a little bit uh, faster. So I've added a tiny bottle of uh, esters. There she goes. Okay. A little faster and I think you could improve the design because it tips over with any more mass than this backwards so if you could somehow put the pulley towards the center of mass uh, this, well the center of the base I mean around here I don't think it'll fall over quite as much maybe that's something the kids could do so this tiny solar car for a dollar fifty you can't really beat it you could use a, a multimeter to measure voltage and current you could change the, uh, the color of the light, the distance of the light to the solar cell. You could even maybe rig it up to make it into a teeny weeny pulley and then use it to measure potential energy. Hey, or kinetic energy of the car. So this is a $3.50 Tesla coil. You can bring LEDs close to it and it will light up. Or uh, you can bring these kind of lights close to it little mini incandescent and it'll also light up and notice that vicious little flame at the top that little flame is very hot you can actually use it to set fire to stuff the blue light is just an LED it isn't actually some ridiculously high energy plasma being produced by the, the cheap Tesla coil so we struggled to come up with uh, an experiment with an independent variable and a dependent variable the only one we got that worked is to change the voltage going into the uh, Tesla coil and see how close you can get until the light comes on. So it turns out as you increase the voltage, uh, you can increase the distance it takes uh, here between the Tesla coil and the light when it first illuminates. And you've got to be a little careful. This heat sink gets a bit hot. And if you jab this inside and hold on to the wires, they'll also get hot enough to burn you. But we did this with a uh, maybe 20 sets of kids, and none of them sustained any burns at all. And so this was an $8 transformer. It has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different voltages, uh, and between three and 12 volts, and they all uh, energize the Tesla coil. So you can use that as your independent variable, the thing that you change. So when this uh, high frequency, uh, high voltage electrode has this I want to electrocute myself here. Has just put on top of it. Uh, it glows with the uh, spectra of the inert gases inside. And to my mind, that's bonkers that that's just coming off of a five volt supply from a USB. And also, also if you've got gas discharge tubes at school, then you can light them up as well. This is much safer than the uh, the system that we normally use, which has. 5,000 volts through it. This is, uh, this is neon, you can see. And then there's helium here. So this is a much safer way for the kids to play with the discharge tubes. And the bonus one is this ghost detector for about two or three dollars. Uh, we were gonna buy one each for the groups of the kids, send them off for an hour and ask them to see what it actually detects. But it turns out, uh, we're not really sure. We thought maybe it was metal or electricity, AC, DC. It is consistent, but we're still, we, we can't work it out ourselves as teachers. A quick example. So the phone, not that. 
for some reason this, I thought maybe I had a ring on, on, and that's setting it off. Not this. It's, it's driving us crazy, but we didn't end up doing it anyway. If you buy one, let us know what the heck it measures. Certainly not ghosts.